Hey guys, welcome to Shiloh Seventh-day Adventist Church here in Chicago, Illinois. This church has been a member of our Church Front Accelerator program, so we've been working alongside of them, uh, doing things al uh, along the lines of education uh, and consulting. We have some integration projects that we'll be working on as well to make some upgrades, uh, but they've already made tremendous progress. And I wanna introduce to you uh, the key team member who's behind all of this. Paul, come over here. So Paul, tell us, introduce yourself to the Church Front community and uh, tell them a little bit more about what you do for the conference. Sure, uh, I am the media director for the Lake Region Conference. We cover about uh, five states here in the Midwest. We have one church in Minnesota. We've got a couple of churches in uh, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan. And my job is to help them develop their media team as well as get procurement for equipment and um, do all kind of uh, online streaming and things like that for their churches. So that's in a nutshell what I what I do. He's basically a tech director for like a hundred churches. Well, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yep. Which short. is a really interesting model the way that the conference does that and is resourcing the churches because a lot of the churches don't have uh, necessarily resources to have full time tech yeah. staff or even part time tech staff. So right. it's cool for them to be able to lean on you for that. Yep. And it would be fun. It's been fun working alongside of you uh, with the Church Fund Accelerator program, sort yep. of again from a consulting role. And man, you've done a great job because I don't want to take credit for a lot of the design decisions here because you you were, were the one who took initiative to do it. Uh, but I'm excited to kind of walk people through the sure. different solutions that you guys implemented over the past year. Sure. I read a book. I forgot the name of the artist, um, but it's called... Um um, steal like an artist. Yeah. Uh, so if you've read that book, so that's pretty much what I've done. I've seen what you guys have done. I've seen what other churches have done. And we've just pretty much taken all of that and just mashed it together and kind of develop what we've got now. So this building is beautiful. Tell us a little bit more about the history of the building. Like how, how old is it? Um, yeah. And then give us a little more context for the renovations you guys are going through right now. Sure, building was built, I uh, think finished building and built in 69. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a lot of the technology um, and a lot of the, elec the electrical work is from 69, so yeah. we, we were grandfathered in when they changed coding and things like that. Mm. But when we decided to do things like a video wall and, and lighting, we really had to bear heavy on electrical mm. um, to get things running the right way. Mm. Um, so the building has been around for that long. The church has been in existence since like the 19, I think I wanna say maybe 1901 or 1902. So it's a long standing congregation. They've been in various parts. Mm -hmm. They used to be in the parish hall next door, which is the church school. Mm -hmm. And that uh, was where they worshiped out of. And then they were able to raise funds and build this building and they moved into it in 69 mm -hmm. uh, and just been operating in it since. It's been a, uh, this community and this church has been a historic building for this Park Manor area here in Chicago. And so a lot of individuals who are now um, judges and lawyers and, and police officers and a lot of people found their roots here in this community. And so um, we wanted to revive all of that and, and kind of start fresh because if a church doesn't recycle itself in you know 40 years, mm -hmm. it declines until it dies, yeah. right? So um, knowing that we're in a technology age, our goal is let's pretty much move techno allow technology to move us mm -hmm. into a virtual space, into a, uh, a fresh looking space for the sanctuary. We're not done yet. We still got some more work to do, but we're just, um, we're just happy to be able to start something. And this is what we've started so far. Yeah, and I think you're doing a great job like maintaining the history and the original aesthetic of yeah. the space. I love the stained glass, yeah. the wood ceilings. Uh, I really want to help churches upgrade their tech without just turning it into a black yeah, box. Exactly, yep, yep. And that's definitely, this church is not a black box church, right? No. They, they love the, uh, like you said, the stained glass, the sconces. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not a big fan of the chandelier, 
but um, we can try to retro it so it's, we can control they're the lighting. They're coming back. They're, they're, so, they're so old, they're cool again. <laughs> they're cool again, exactly. I, I think like, they're pretty cool. If yeah. you could put some, maybe some like bet newer LED fixtures. Exactly. But then again, I kind of like the old school in incandescent bulbs as well. Yeah. And for us, that's fine as long as we're, we want to be able to control it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's our biggest thing. We want to be able Dimming to control it, set the mood, yeah. set the tone. Do all kind of stuff like that with it. So, totally. but yeah, we we wanted to keep the historic church mm -hmm. look. Um, yep. uh, one one thing I talked with the pastor, we redesigned the stage, and I told him, you know, we could not have stairs at the front. We just wanted to have like stairs at the side, and mm -hmm. then at the front, yep. like an auditorium look. Yeah. And he was like, no, we need to preserve the historicity. The you know, we wanted to look like a church, so yep. and not look like an auditorium style. Yep. So this is, uh, an, he al won that this is an altar. It's not just a stage, right? Exactly. And I like exactly. so that you guys refinished all the steps and the flooring up here. Yep, that looks great. And then as we move up here on stage, mm -hmm. what's interesting is this product you have on the walls that's absorbing uh, yeah. the acoustic, uh, the, the, a lot of the sound that's up here. So not yep. only does it look good, it's kind of like. Both the, they have black kind of uh, wood slatted uh, acoustic absorbing walls as well as the white ones on the on the front of yep. the, the the stage there. Yep. So it's functional and yep. it looks good. Yeah, we wanted to control do as much control of sound on the stage because we got a wood floor, so yep. we don't want to have everything bouncing all over the place. Mm -hmm. So this was a good um, use of it. I think it's wood veneer hub or something yeah. like that. And so we talked with them. They told us what they can do for us, and mm -hmm. they sent us out some samples. We pulled them up. They yeah. look good. It's minimalistic, yeah. right? So it will look black, but then it's got a little tiny design in it in terms of the slats. So, yeah. um, And again, it's got that foam at the back that allows you to just absorb a lot of the stuff on the stage so that you don't have a lot of reverberance and stuff yep. like that. Yeah, and Prime Acoustic makes a lot of wood slat yep. acoustic treatment things as well, whether it's panels for walls or uh, even clouds and things like that. So yep. lots of creative acoustic treatment that's also aesthetically pleasing. You don't need to get just the plain old panels. Right, right. Okay, and then we've got an altitude LED wall system yep. here. So this is about 30 feet wide, Yep. about, 10, about, feet about 10 feet tall. Yep. What are the dimensions of the side screens off the top of your head? Eight by 13. Eight now, by that's 13. Not, that's, that's literally on the top of my head yep. because we initially were looking at doing your regular six by nine. Yep. And then it was like, imagine this guy that's got this big body and this little tiny head. That's yeah. what it would have looked like. So uh, yeah. we actually had to increase the size of the, um, the the side screens because we realized that, oh my goodness, that's, yeah. what, what were we thinking, six by nine? Yeah, yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, the pixel pitch is 2.97, and these are yep. the Apex panels by Altitude. So mm -hmm. check out altitudeled.com. Yep. And it's looking good. I yeah. love oh, yeah. I love the whole like center uh, center screen with the, with the two side screens up there because yeah. during the service you guys will see footage. You can have the uh, top screens the side or the yeah the screens above are for like iMag and yeah. then the screen behind the band kind of sets the stage design and the look for for worship or or for the sermon as well. So then looking at the Pro Church lights fixtures, you've got uh, quite a few kick lights behind yep. us that we got mm -hmm. sufficient front uh, lights and then yep. you also have some of their movers, movers up yep. there as well. Mm -hmm. Lots of flexibility, you can see hopefully the lighting looks a whole lot better up here. The side walls have the uh, Pro Kicks, it looks mm -hmm. like shining down on the white walls and that adds some color kind of to the house uh, yeah. section of the room. Yeah, right. and really extends the de stage design uh, yeah. to the congregation. And that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to not have them just watch and see the lights happening and changing color here. Yeah. Uh, the psychological dynamic of it is that, you know, because the lights are changing out there too, yep. now it's like, oh, oh, I'm a part of this. You yep. know? So it's like if we turn the whole church blue, you know, it's like we set the mood for not just what's happening up here, yep. but for the entire congregation. Exactly, cool. Uh, we've got a beautiful, real grand piano. <laughs> oh, and of course, there's an amazing organ down here as well. Yeah, that actually, so. Rogers you guys, organ. Yeah, you have a full-on organ system here. Oh, my it, goodness. It, it's got a ton of speakers everywhere. Yeah. Right? It's not real pipes. It's just like no, it's like no, its yeah. own sound yeah. system. Own sound so system. So it's a separate PA from your new PA that you yeah. have. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We found that out. <laughs> we found yeah. that out that we we really needed to keep these speakers here, and I think it's got about thirty something speakers in this entire church. Yeah. just for that organ. It's like Dolby Atmos yes. uh, organ yes. uh, version here. I really wish someone was here today to play it. Um, we normally have this really guy, a uh, really good guy that yeah. comes out and plays for us professionally, mm -hmm. and um, when he tickles that thing, it just the the building 
moves. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, over here, we've got the Pixel Sticks by Pro Church Lights. So yep. again, another lighting fixture, but also nice touch to the aesthetic of a stage design. Um, and then on stage here, we've also got, this is our other backline musician section over here. We've got a Yamaha drum set with uh, some, some baffles. Uh, this is one area where we're like, man, I, I really yeah. do think this stage like this could utilize either full isolation, mm -hmm. maybe we could talk about an electric kit, then again, stylistically, the gospel style music, like it, it I feel like you need a live kit. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but overall, it wasn't that, like I really think the mix was great this morning, that your mix yeah. engineer is doing a great job and that PA sounds great. Yeah. So, shout out to uh, Michael Curtis for that, by the way. Yep. Michael Curtis helped with the design on that. Yep. And then I know you, you like had this JBL system already and then no. he, or he helped tweak it or what was that? Or you no, just we, wanted to go with that JBL? Yeah, we, we went with the JBL. Pastor wanted a line array. Yeah. And so that's what we did. We talked with Mike about how is the best way to get that thing up there. Yeah. We were debating whether, where the subs were going to go, if we were going to be flowing or not. And we yeah. decided to fly them. Yeah. And so, yeah, that, that was the system that we had. Uh, a lot of a lot of discussion went into that. Yeah. Obviously, working with the um, structural engineer to make sure we can actually hang mm -hmm. 1,200 plus pounds in that ceiling, and yeah. we're, we're so far we're good. So far, yeah. So far we're yeah. good. Um, and then we we do have floor wedges here. Again, Please don't point those out. I know. <laughs> so it looks like they must be they're older carbon speakers. Must be yeah. running they came on with the amp. building. Yeah. So uh, th that's another, you know, hopefully soon to yeah. soon to upgrade aspect of it. We can get you set up with uh, a good yep. in-ear monitor system. Also some wireless mics. Those are looking a little dated, yeah. having some yeah. connectivity issues if people hold them the wrong way. So yeah. Yeah. we can look into getting those upgraded as well. Um, that's a very nice pulpit too, though. The the glass. It look. is. It is. It's it's a it's definitely a a classic piece, yeah. right? It's a classic piece mm -hmm. um, that, that we've had, and it really speaks to the, the culture of the community, the culture of the church. You know, yeah. it's a very um, regal yeah. uh, pulpit, not your traditional, not the contemporary style nowadays, so yeah. All right, Paul, tell us a little bit more about these cameras, the Sony FR7s. I've heard a lot of good things about them. Yes. They kind of look like my dream PTZ <laughs> camera setup. They are. Um, but yeah, tell us about this system. Cool. Um, so in my research, um, we wanted some cinematic cameras. One of the challenges that we had was having personnel to run gear, mm -hmm. um, run equipment. And so uh, PTZ just made sense to us. Mm -hmm. um, and so in my research, we said, OK, we needed something that will give us a cinematic look, but we kind of didn't want the flat look of a PTZ that, mm -hmm. you know, so it was either a broadcast look or a cinematic look. And so yeah. going with these were, were to me a no brainer. I love the science, the color science, the, the, the autofocus, all that stuff on a, on a Sony camera. So mm -hmm. that's why we went with that. It's basically an FX6 yeah. in a PTZ format. And yeah. so it was a no brainer to do that. Um, we are future proofed because we've ran uh, 12G SDI cables, even though we're running um, the deck link um, I'm sorry, the Constellation. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when that time comes where 4K becomes normal, yep. we're already in that space, right? Yep. So that's the cool thing about cameras like these. So mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. really, really like these cameras. Very flexible, yep. very flexible and um, easy to use. Yeah, and these are kind of for the church. The church is kind of uh, borrowing them right now from the, from the conference. Yeah. Is that how yeah. that works? Because you might use these cameras for other events and stuff that you're hosting for the conference. And then, uh, so the, the other option I know we were chatting about with your pastor was maybe getting some Canon CRN 500 or 700, yeah. which can have a really quality image, but yeah. not be quite as uh, yeah, yeah. much of an investment as these guys are. Right, so, right, yeah. Um, so yeah, the camera setup's simple. You've got SDI to each camera, data run mm -hmm. to each camera for the control yep. uh, of them. Um, and then there's the, the joystick controller that you guys will see up in the uh, broadcast right. room. And, and uh, what lenses are you running on the cameras? Uh, right now I've got a, I think it's a kit lens on the Sony, on the, uh, on the FR7, which I think is a 28 to 135, 4F.4 mm -hmm. uh, stop. Yep. Um, and, that's then, like, and that's a servo lens, right? Like, yes, it's a servo lens. Where that one lens. actually can be controlled, the zoom yep. can be controlled by the yep. controller. Yep. And then this other one doesn't look like a servo it's lens. It's not a servo lens. This one, I was wait. it was like, for me, when I bought this, it was like Christmas, right? So mm -hmm. we've got the 2.8, 70 to 200 yeah. lens, um, uh, Sony lens. Yep. 
But then I also added a uh, teleconverter on it, a two times teleconverter. Oh yeah. All right, so that we can get, so now it's a 140 to, to 400 yep. lens. And then uh, Crozel, I think I named it right. Maybe you can look it up and post it in there for them. Uh, but it's called Crozel. They make these uh, servo feeds. And yeah. so I was waiting for the firmware update from Sony. Mm -hmm. And once that happened, Crozel shipped me my copy, my- um, Oh, my, so it does have servo capability yeah, now. So now oh, yeah, so now I see that. You could put now any lens on, uh, mm -hmm. you don't, you're not limited to the only two or three Sony lenses that they, that yep. they come with this kit. So you can put any Sony lens on that bad boy and put your um, servo zoom kit on it from Crozel and you're good to go. That's nice. So keep in mind, these are full frame yes. PGZ cameras. Like you said, the same sensor from an FX6. So you're getting that amaz amazing uh, mm -hmm. color accuracy, um, the depth of field from these lenses. Uh, got this stand because we were at uh, Wellspring, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, you, went, you yeah. stopped by Wellspring I Church by in Wellspring Colorado. In, yeah. yeah, in Colorado. So um, I saw this and I was like, wait a minute, he's in our backyard. Savvy yep. is out in Michigan. So mm. reach out to him. And so we've got some, uh, these, uh, the yeah. ones that I got, this one pretty much is a, I can adjust the height oh, if that's I want cool. to. So yeah. yeah, so this is pretty cool yeah. to be able to adjust the height. I, it was either get one that was a standard height or get the adjustable one. And we opted to go for that adjustable one. And then it actually is a space saver because now you would have to have a tripod and you'd have to have a box mm -hmm. and you'd have to have, you know, yeah. some person. Yep. So this just really helps. And now you got two, I can put two cameras on this instead of just one. Yeah, it's very clean. Do they make an option where the cables could just run down down the middle of it? Not with the adjustable height because okay. the, all of the mechan mechanism oh, yeah. to move it is here. So I do have it, it's right here. It's just got that it. it goes in here and then it that comes makes out sense. here. Here we are at front of house. So we've got the Allen & Heath SQ7. I think you guys, the stage box is at the 48 input stage box. Yep, the GS stage there. box. Yep, and then we've got a rack down here. You've got your lighting Mac and your uh, Proclaim presentation Mac right here, rack mounted the nice Sonnet Rack Mac Mini. We've got the 2ME Constellation switcher, um, which also does a lot of great uh, video routing for you guys. Mm -hmm. um, and then we got the Sonnet Echo Express SE1 for your deck link, probably coming from the Proclaim Mac, I mm -hmm. believe. And then we've got the Pro Church Lights um, panel, or the really, it's, it's like the brain for the wall panel, right? Because yep. you've got that on the, I saw that somewhere, yeah, on the desk right there to be able to quickly recall presets for lights from the little panel. Then two processors is, so one of these is for the center screen and one's for the side screens? Yep, top is for the center. I mean, top is for the two sides and then the bottom is for the center. What about for the your confidence? Um, we've got a little small one back there. I forgot the name of it, but it's it wasn't a rack, rackable one. We oh, okay. decided to uh, we decided to go with that small one. It, did, it made no sense to get the Nova Star yeah. you know, 400. It's kind of for, overkill. For, yeah, it's overkill, yeah. Because so, actually, you guys look up here, there's another uh, Apex panel from Altitude uh, right there for a confidence monitor for yeah. the musicians. We, we just couldn't find a TV that was large enough for us to be able to. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's a long distance, and that's a great application for yeah. an LED wall. I've actually, now I think about it, it might be the first LED wall I've seen for a for stage our, screen like that. Yeah. Um, so then over here is our workstation for lighting, running mm -hmm. light key to run all the, the lights. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the workstation here for uh, running Proclaim for presentation. And then it looks like you got another extra monitor yeah. if you need it. So in this space, um, I want to give a shout out to Jeff from Wellsprings um, Church because mm -hmm. uh, he gave us this idea of making sure that no one puts our drinks on here. So yep. I, I stole that, like again, yep. stealing like an artist. Brilliant. Um, you can't see it but it's, 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 it's here. Uh, we've poured concrete in this center portion right here. Yep. So it's, that I way, feel it. so that yeah. way, you know, the musician, the, 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 our front of house uh, engineer can actually feel what the congregation is feeling and not feel extra, you know, vibration. Cause yep. if you stand over here, yep. you're going to feel the vibration. But when you come here, you're mm -hmm. pretty much feeling what everybody else is feeling. So that was intentionally done. Yep. Um, Adam gave us a good, gave me a good idea about using sit stand desk. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, yeah, this is cool. Cause you know, most sound engineers, they're like, you know, when they stand up, you know, you don't want to sit down all the time. They yeah. stand up, they're like, you know, got to do that to mix. Yep. So this gives them the flexibility um, to be able to do that. So it was really cool. Nice. I like using the uh, gooseneck talkback mic setup too. Yeah, that's just because that's all we had. So yeah, it works. <laughs> it works. <laughs> it's more convenient, I think. Yeah. Welcome to the mother's room. 
Uh, there's probably a lot of uh, disappointed mothers who try to find a place to feed their baby when they walk into a bunch of guys running tech gear in here. So, um, all right, so we got some workstations here. At four, and a lot, we know this is kind of an organization in progress yeah. and stuff. So yeah. don't judge people. We can come and film your, your messes at your church too. Exactly. Um, we've got, this is like your video director station. Yep. So you've got ATEM control software. Um, to control the constellation that was down there in front of mm -hmm. house. Some stream decks for some easy control of, looks like for cameras. Yeah. Cutting cameras, Cutting we can cameras control and, the, yeah. the ATEM. And then we've got the joystick controller here for the Sonys. So this is quite the yeah. nice controller you got going on. Yeah, nice for, uh, we're gonna set up some uh, pre, um, what's it called, some presets, some shots for mm -hmm. what we need to do. So we're still tweaking all the details of it, but we'll, we'll get there. Yep. Uh, and then this is just kind of an extra kind of workspace. I took it over uh, yeah. today. And then you've got your broadcast SQ6 yep. console. So Adam was actually the one he was able to dial in your mix for you guys this morning. Mm -hmm. Sounded great. I was loving what I was hearing. And then we've got the BoxCast here. Mm -hmm. BoxCast Pro receiving stereo input from the SQ, and then you've got your program going into there. Yep. And that's how it gets streamed online to yeah. YouTube, uh, Boxcast TV, where yep. else do you guys send it? Facebook. Too. Facebook. Yeah. Um, really powerful encoder. Yeah. And I think I went overkill on the uh, sit stand desks, but that's okay. Lots of sit, -sit stand desks. Lots of sit stand. Got to get, yep. got to get, you know, yep. got to get the blood flowing, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah and with, I, I would say here, getting, um, getting some more cable management tools yes. to just get the cables cleaned up. I've been really excited about using KVMs more uh, okay. recently. So then you can actually, you know, you could rack that computer like maybe back here somewhere and you could just have a KVM nice. for your monitor uh, and your keyboard and mouse and over a network cable. It's nice and clean. You know yeah. what? Very few broadcast booths mm -hmm. actually have its own bathroom. Yeah, so, you guys got your so own bathroom we, right here. We got our own bathroom right yep. there. Yep. But um, but yeah, so that's that's really cool. We we want to turn this space into kind of like a chill spot. Mm -hmm. So even during the week when we come, we could just hang out, put that TV on the wall, um, you know, be able to just have some some fellowship time. Because I think that's a big part of our ministry, media ministry. Yeah. Um, you know, I believe that the media ministry team is going to be uh, really leading the forefront in pushing the gospel out. Um, because it's going to go beyond the walls because of this ministry. Yeah. And so being able to have them uh, in a space where we can, where me as a pastor, I'm, I'm ministering to these volunteers and everyone mm -hmm. that comes on board with this media team. So what I'm looking at doing is, is not just, oh, we need people that's gifted to know how to, you know, be TDs and be front of house and be broadcast mix and stuff like that. We need individuals. I, I want to grow them spiritually, mm -hmm. right? Because the work that we're doing here is really Holy Spirit work. Mm -hmm. and this is the behind the scenes. Yep. We we are the we are the ones that take the message. Like Jesus says, the Holy Spirit will pretty much send this message uh, beyond what I can do. So I, I have to go so that the Holy Spirit can come and do this. And so now with the work of the Holy Spirit, being able to use technology to send a message all the way out to other parts of the world, you know, various parts of people who would never set foot inside of a church, they could hear the message because of this ministry. So that's what yeah. I'm passionate about. Paul, thanks so much for letting us join you uh, on cool. this journey and letting us visit today or this week. Adam's been here for a couple days. I know yeah. helping you out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you guys can check out uh, Shiloh online. Just look them up or we'll link it down below this video to check out uh, what they're up to. And hope you guys uh, were able to take away a valuable idea or two or three okay. from this system. And as always, you can reach out to us at Churchfront if you'd like to, us to partner with your ministry on a consulting or an integration role, we can help you implement a lot of the systems that you see here. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.